Hi, I'm Rob Smart, the editor of Meribel Unplugged. I'm in lockdown at the moment in Meribel, <laughs> could be worse. I've been around a long time, so I thought a little history for you. After a few two week ski holidays here back in the 80s, I started my first full season in December 1988. The reason? Well, back in January 86, I'd skied here and joined the brand new ESF off-piste beginners class. I was actually their very first client. With some difficulty over the two weeks, I learned to ski deep powder, and it was deep. Two metres of it in that January. In 1988, I took my last ski holiday. I left Mirabel in January of that year to fly home, having just that last morning skied all the way down to Le Pra village in Courcheval in over one metre of fresh snow. Incredible. So I swore never to leave powder like that again. So in 1988, I decided at the ripe old age of 41 to become a ski bum. I arrived in early December. My first season was spent skiing nearly every day, using all my savings. But luckily, I was offered a job at the end of the season as PR man for the French ski school. My old instructor Fred, who taught me powder, had become the boss and he offered me the job, so I took it. This in turn led me to meet the owner of Radio Mirabel, where I started the English weather forecast and the news and eventually ended up with my own evening show, 7 to 8 o'clock every night. Music, good music too. So now at the age of 73 I'm into my 32nd season. I still ski off piece when possible, but on easier slopes nowadays. Nothing too extreme, thank you very much. I've had all that. But give me fresh powder, spring snow and a blue sky and I'll be there. I still love it very much. Many people have asked me if Maribel has changed since those early days. Well, it certainly has, especially since the 1992 Winter Olympics. At that time, new road links were built right through the whole region, all the way up to Val d'Isere. There was an enormous amount of new building done in Mirabel itself. The whole of the showdown area was created almost from scratch. I can't really remember what was there before. So now, of course, it includes the Olympic Centre with the ice rink, the swimming pool, etc. The new Olymp gondola was also created for the Olympics. That runs up from Bridley Band down in the valley, right up to Shodan. Uh, Bridley Band was the main accommodation area for all the world's journalists during the Olympics. And uh, new hotels were built at the wrong point. And the whole of the very posh Belvedere area that was also built for the 1992 Olympics. It's actually hard now to remember what Mirabel was like before those Olympics. It, it changed so much. It's really hard to remember the earlier days. So another question I'm asked, is it better now? Well, as is quite usual for most of the old gits here in Mirabel, including me, of course, we think it was better in the old days. Yep, we did have to queue more smaller chairlifts, quite often two-man chairlifts, single drag lifts, and even some open two-man buckets. God knows when they were built. But it meant at least when you got to the top, the pieces were quite empty because <laughs> everybody was still queuing at the bottom. Now with all the fast six and eight-man chairlifts, it's all changed. You have to be on the very first one at nine o'clock in the morning to find any piece as quiet as they were back then in the 80s. For off-piece skiing in those days, we were also on skinny two meter long skis. This meant you had to spend much more time learning off-piece technique. It's much easier now with the short fat skis. And plus, of course, there weren't any of you snowboarders. <laughs> so the off-piste areas lasted much longer. Snowboarding had been created, but it wasn't in Mirabel yet. Now, everywhere is skied out so quickly, every time we get a big new fresh snowfall, 
by lunch most of it's gone. So yes, for those of us old enough to remember, I'm afraid we all think it was far better. However, nowadays with over 400 miles of piece skiing, and still a lot of off-piste, although much of it you can't see from the piste, Maribel and the Free Valleys is still a really fabulous place to ski. So I certainly recommend it with, with no hesitation at all, especially to intermediate skiers that may want to travel the mountains a lot or even progress to learning off-piste skiing. Uh, for beginners and kids, we've got a great selection of gentle slopes, especially up in the Altipult area. There's a lovely forest up there with tracks through the forest for the kids. Uh, it's fabulous. So which ski pass should you buy? The intermediates and above skiers, I recommend the whole Free Valley ski pass. It's, it would be such a shame just to have Maribel. For beginners, the Maribel Valley pass should be enough for you as you can always buy a one day extension. That means you can pop over to Courcheval if you wish, quite easier. And Courcheval 1850 is another super place for beginners. On my website there's a full ski guide section for first time visitors to Maribel. I promise you it's well worth reading this. So now for après ski, very important for a ski holiday. Maribel has a great selection of bars, especially catering to the Brits, and there's a load of us come here every winter. On the Salir mountain, there's the famous Folly Juice, a French disco bar and restaurant. Kicks off at three in the afternoon and closes just before five. After that, you've got a good choice of British run après ski bars with live music, usually starting between four and five and lasting till about 7 p.m. Below the Altiport, is Maribel Village, which hosts the LDV bar. This has live music every afternoon, as usual, and is very popular with the local workers. The bands here play outside in a giant heated marquee, so it has a great atmosphere every afternoon. At the Ron Point area is the very famous Ron Point bar, one of the originals. This has live music every afternoon starting around 4 or 5 as usual. Further down at the Chaudan Centre is the new Jack's Bar right by the piste. Live music starting again around 4 or 5 to around 7. These bars have all the best bands playing in the Alps. On my website you can get a full rundown of the whole après ski scene in Mirabel, but these are the three main ones with live music for the après ski. Live music at night is a bit more restricted. You've got the pub in the centre of town, the tavern opposite, and occasionally the Soretta down in Lesalu village has live music too. O'Sullivan's Disco is the most popular for the Brits. It's just down, down the hill from the town and is open to about five in the morning. There's loads of other nice relaxing bars in Mirabel town. You can find them all on my website and in the magazine. So now, mountain restaurants, my favourite subject. Over the years I've discovered a lot of nice restaurants that are not too expensive. I've tried to find those that we can afford to eat in. You'll find these listed in my six day ski guide, which I print every year. Uh, for new visitors to Maribel, be sure to pick up a copy, it's all over town. Bear in mind also that restaurants on the mountain have a very short season and they serve mainly only lunches. They often pay very expensive rents and they also pay an awful lot of money for their staff. This is due to the extremely high French employment taxes. This means their profits are not quite as high as we might think when we look at the prices on their menus. So have a little bit of sympathy for their costs. Now for dinner restaurants. We have uh, uh, so many in Maribel, varying prices, so best to check out my magazine when you arrive or browse my website which has a good idea of the types of menu they have and also the prices. Uh, if you do go out on a Wednesday night, do book early because that's so busy in Maribel. So during the winter season every Thursday and Friday I'll be doing a weekly updated snow report plus any other news I think might be useful for you. So have a good Good trip. Look forward to seeing you in Maribel soon. Ciao, Rob Smart.